Well, welcome to my YouTube channel, Mispronounced Adventures, and this video is a bit of a deviation away from my normal stuff, which is about my van build and my exploration work. Um, if you found this video, you've probably acquired or are looking at getting some second-hand um, Valence U2712 XP lithium batteries, and you probably want to speak to them as you want to plug them into the computer. So this video, I'm going to look at doing two things. One, repairing them. The batteries I received are the older black model, uh, not the more modern green ones, but the connectors are the same. And on some of mine, the plugs were broken, and on one of them, the communication cables have been completely cut off. So I remade those, So I um, and I'll show you that. And also how then you make the custom communications wire, which is using these amp sockets or uh, Tyco connectors, and how you use that with a RS-485 uh, serial adapter to USB how you wire that up and then how you plug it into the machine and then how you get the diagnostic software to work as well. So I'm trying to show you all those different bits in the video mainly because I had issues in every single step and I scoured the internet for lots of information I sort of cobbled together lots of little bits of information from different places I thought it would be quite a good opportunity to put a video together for that. So first off let's look at um, fixing cut cables and plugs on the batteries themselves. Right well less conveniently on this one, the comms cables have been cut off, which doesn't affect the overall use of the battery, but I do want to get these working again so I can connect the computer to it and understand the history of the battery. Um, it's not the end of the world, all you need to do is just strip off the wire and put a new set of connectors on, but these are quite short, so I'm probably going to extend them a little bit first and then add the, um, and then build the plug back into it. So the cables inside these are pretty thin, so I'm just being pretty careful when going through the sheaf at the minute not to uh, nick any of the cables inside. Right, so this is the cable shielding, which I don't need. So these use RS-485 serial. So what we've got is we've got a 5 volt positive as the red one, the common, the ground, which is the black, and then the white and green, or blue, I can't see what it looks like in this camera, are um, data cables, or A plus and B minus. So if you will notice that these are 5 pin, while this is only four wires, it's because the fifth pin can be used for the shielding, as you'll see on there. But if you can see that one. Red for red, I haven't got any black, so we're gonna use black. Brown for black, green for green, and this sort of blue and white for the white one. So this is a slightly thicker gauge, I haven't got a smaller gauge, but that shouldn't really be important in this, in this application. So I'm gonna use my smallest little connectors to crimp these butt connectors on and then apply the bigger wire to the other end. Just to point out, although these are exposed at the minute, nothing should happen if those, are or those touch each other because they aren't being provided battery power. The, when you plug these into the computer or the, the um, battery management system, that gives them the power. Also, I believe, I should probably test that. Where's my voltmeter gone? So just to test that these are in fact not alive. Nope. That's what I thought. Right. Although I don't see really any purpose of doing it, I'm gonna just I am going to put a connector onto the shielding as well, and we can connect that up. At least we would have all five wires then. Right, next job is you need to heat shrink all of these to finish and seal them up. So I'm just going to use a heat gun to uh, finish off these heat shrink seals.
just as an extra little bit because this is still a little bit loose at the top I'm just gonna cable tie the very top of it all right this is one of the other batteries this one has just had its connector pulled off um, and I'm running out of these pin connectors so what I'm gonna have to do is probably recycle this uh, because I'm gonna need to save the other ones for the uh, for the other battery I need to do so if I was doing this more often or I was generally using these connectors I would buy the correct crimp for them um, as I don't have the correct temp crimp um, so this is going to be a little bit of a ghetto crimping job. Think the way these. So what you normally do with these is you put the pin, one of these seals, and the pin on the end of there, and then these clip into the holes in here. Cool, so we're just going to do much the same again with the cables we just we made. So that is all of them, all the communications cables repaired to the original forms. Uh, next thing to build the communications cable, which is going to be one of these. Um, connectors to a USB. I did that uh, last night though so I'm going to roll that footage now. What I want to do is I want to build a communications cable. These are the actual terminals which are powering the 12 volt system that's in the van. These are communication cables and these are using Tyco or AMP super seals which is what I've got a set of here. This is what makes this model a little bit confusing. Everything says this is the generation one battery. However, the generation one battery uses a completely different pin layout um, connector type, which looks a bit like this. Um, whilst the generation two uses this, which is the connectors, which this has on, on it. Um, so I'm using the schematics here on, on how it works, which wire does what. And what I'm going to be connecting to is this. So this is, these are going to be a RS485 cable. And this is an RS485 cable to USB. That's going to allow us to basically convert these wires into a format which I can plug directly into a computer. Obviously I can't plug this type into a computer. So I'm going to build that cable now and then after that's built we can plug it into the computer hopefully. So I just bought this set of the super seals which come in all the way from the single pin all the way up to six pin. For this we need uh, the five pin variation. However, I think only four of the pins we're actually going to use. So looking at the diagram, in this orientation the top pin, pin number one, is no signal. It's going to be a black wire pin type A and it's the shield so that isn't probably going to be used in ours. Pin number two is the ground, pin number three is the B plus which is the data signal, pin number four is going to be A minus which is a data signal and five which is the bottommost pin is going to be the five volt power supply. And that 5 volt power supply, as far as I'm aware, is coming from the laptop into the battery management system and not the other way around. It's not the battery feeding power into the computer. Might not be the prettiest, but this should be the communication cable so the battery can speak to the computer. So if you're like me, 
you've probably run into this annoying error. I'm currently getting very annoyed because you've got your batteries plugged in, you've made your nice cable and for some reason it's not finding them. So let's go through all the possible ways uh, I know of to hopefully fix this issue. So this was the issue I had with mine. Uh, it was the way, it was the information I used the way I made the cable. So the, the balance manual shows pin 5 as 5 volts. Pin number 4 is going to be A minus, uh, being a data pin. Uh, pin 3 as B plus. Pin number 2 is the ground. The adapter shows 5 volt, A data, B data, ground. So presumably I thought the same layout. What I didn't read is there's a slight formatting error in this um, in this manual which puts the little minus mark next to the A which is A minus B plus on the data whilst on this one it labels them as A plus B minus so I was doing A to A B to B but actually in this case it was the other way around it was an A minus so once I swapped on this my A plus my A minus my B plus the other way around or switched the data pins it worked first time and I think this is an issue quite a few people have come across uh, when buying this adapter which is basically when you look up uh, RS485 to USB one of the first ones which appears on Amazon so that is a root of probably a lot of people's problems in my searching for solutions I came across a lot of the problems which people have and I had a go at, fi at fixing them so first one is this software is from 2012 there are two variations there seems to be most of the ones which you'll find and you look for is the 12.12 .12 version apparently there is a 12.9 um, which maybe potentially runs on Windows 7 however the 12.12 .12 will only run on Windows 10 so after you opened it let's have a see what our first error is first error is no comms port COM port is the port which you've plugged the USB adapter you've made into. So up here, you've got COM port. Click on the drop-down menu. Generally, nothing would happen uh, because I've only I've typed in them before. You have to manually type in the COM port. So, which would be C O M, and we're going to go COM three. Start read. So this is the next one. No comms port selected, even though you've typed in uh, the correct comms, uh, you've typed in comms port. So what a lot of people will do is you can either just guess. Um, I know this is comms port four this is in. Start read and we've cleared the comms port error. So the way to figure out your comms port, go to search, Go to device manager, once you're in device manager, scroll down until you see ports, and that's our USB adapter there, USB serial port, comms for. The other thing you would want to do is click on the properties of this and check that you've got drivers installed or that you've got a FTDI uh, driver for the, or the correct driver for that serial to USB converter. I believe for this case we just went with the one Microsoft downloaded and um, believing it what it needed to do and that's worked. So that's how you found the comms port, after that enter it in there. Next up, I know the issue is we haven't run this program in administrator. So we need to go into... So after you've found the Valance software in your um, program files, what we're going to do is we're going to right click properties and then we're going to go to security and we're going to check our permissions and we're going to give access uh, all the access admin stuff to this folder next thing we're going to do is when we run the software we're going to run it in administrator mode so right click run an administrator yep Right, so our comms port's reset, so we're going to type in comms4, we know it's in, our, it's in comms port 4, and we've currently got a battery plugged in, so we're going to go locate battery, and it's telling us, there we go, one of our batteries 
is in ID number it's ID number six. So it's going to automatically change to ID number six. You can rename your IDs if you wish. Uh, in my case, the batteries have got on them in pen written their numbers. And you hit start read, and then you've got all your information. One of the other things which people have run into it is the .NET framework your version of Windows is running. So the way to check that is to go to yeah, I think it's go control panel. Once in control panel, let's go to programs. And once in there, we want to have a look at turn Windows features on and off. And we want to look for the .NET framework. But there you go, see so we're running the .NET framework, which is 2, 3, and 3.5, and then the new modern ones. You probably need the older frameworks because the diagnostic software is from 2012. So check that those are running. You don't need to open it and click these files as long as this black box is checked, that's all good. So just because I can, I'm going to rig up another one of these communications cables. So this seems to be another popular sort of um, RS-485 serial to USB with another with a different pin layout. So I'm going to make one with this, just so we can see that works. People who buy this one off Amazon, it's a bit of video for them. And just because I don't think it matters, opposed to using opposed to using the male um, connector, and I said I'm going to use the female connector because I don't think it makes any difference. We'll soon find out. So uh, on this one, there is a number th pin three and pin four are NC, and I don't know if there's any difference between those. So I'm just going to plug them into here and grab my multimeter and see uh, if any information comes up. So I'm just going to try and figure out if there's any difference between these. I need a positive, a five volt positive. So that is. 0.2 volts. So the middle one appears to be the pin I need. Although it's only doing 4.7 volts. Let's have a look. Locate battery. No port selected. So we need to go to change that to port 5. Locate battery. Hmm. Alright, so let's try some other options. Unplug that. Let's swap the data connection wires over. Okay, no luck. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is we're going to test. We know this one works. So we're going to take this one apart, put these wires in here and see if that makes any difference. There we go. So yeah, you can use a female or a male end to make it work. Still need to figure out how to get this one to work. So I think the issue is um, this is not kicking out five volts out of the for the power positive, which means well it means the battery management system isn't powering up. So at the moment, I don't think you can use this. You could probably do something else. After you've got the program running and you get your correct comms port, you can go to the if you go to the battery into info tab and you press scan. You're going to find all the batteries you've got daisy chained together. So it's found three modules. I've got three modules down. Back over in the first tab, what you can do is you can then go to pick one of those IDs. So we had number six. So let's look at well, let's look at number six then. Start read. So number six is showing uh, all the information expected. No flags up here. The only slight issue is the cell spreads a bit high, uh, which is 37, uh, with the limit being 10. And in the event log, its cycle discharge amount is 82 which is good to hear. That was the one which had the cables completely cut off and I remade them. And let's go stop read. Let's go for battery nine. Start read. Okay, well that pretty much sums up the video. Um, I'm really hopeful you, you found it helpful. Um, I made it because 
finding all the information. There's information out there just in so many different places, so I wanted to try a bit of everything and I thought it'd be a really good idea to make a video. The main difference you might have is, one, your batteries will probably be green because they're probably going to be the newer model, not my older ones. Um, so my actual problem was my communications cable. The instructions on the um, serial adapter to USB were a little bit vague and I didn't realise that the A and B plus and minuses had been swapped around. Um, if you've got one of these ones, instead these blue ones of Amazon, I couldn't get this to work. I'm not saying it's not going to work, but I think the issue was it wasn't supplying uh, 5 volts. It was supplying uh, 4.17 volts through its positive cable. And I understand that these need 5. On my black adapter, um, again, this was supplying 5 volts, and after I got the cables right, it worked first time. But these were only really cheap off Amazon. These were probably about, I think, £8 and £13. So if you're interested in seeing what I do um, with these batteries, um, feel free to follow my channel and my build series for my van, uh, where you'll see me building, building in the sort of safety protocols for over voltage, uh, under voltage and low temperature cutoffs, uh, which a proper battery management system would have. These only have their sort of slave battery management systems. Without the master battery management system, uh, these can't really do much apart from manage themselves individually but no cutoffs at all so I'm going to be building that into my system if you want to follow that if not I hope you found it useful uh, thank you very much and well hopefully I'll see you again cheers